Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to look at section 16 in section 3.4. Investigate the number of oranges needed to stack the fruit in a tetrahedron. The first three pieces. So, um, part A says uh, complete a chart showing the total number of oranges needed relative to the number of layers. Okay, so if we're going to put in the number of layers here, uh, we'll call that N. Uh, and of course, there's one layer, two layers, three layers deep in these examples. So we'll have to have examples for one, two, and three at least. Um, and the number of oranges, well, there's one orange if it's one layer. It's not much of a tetrahedron, but anyway. Uh, if there's two layers, then there's one in the top layer and three in the bottom layer, which leads to four. And uh, if there's uh, if, if there's three layers, then there's one in the top and three in the bottom, and then six. You notice that this is a uh, series of um, triangular numbers. Uh, well, the next one would be uh, ten etc. Um, and uh, that would add up to, so that would add up to 10 actually. And oops, I made a little mistake here. Should have said that was equal to 4. Right? So our numbers here are uh, 1, 4, 10. Maybe you can guess what the next one would be. Okay, uh, I guess that's that's part A. Part B says, identify the results in Pascal's triangle and describe your findings. So here we go. I've produced a crude Pascal's triangle, and we can see the numbers uh, 1, 4, 10, which show up in this diagonal. And it sort of suggests that the next tetrahedron would have uh, 20 if I was to extend it and create a tetrahedron with or a pyramid with a base with with four layers. It's worth mentioning, by the way, that that you can get these by adding up the triangular numbers. So the triangular numbers are here. So if there's one uh, triangular number leads to one, or um, one plus three. If you think of the hockey stick pattern, 1 plus 3 adds to 4, or 1 plus 3 plus 6, uh, if you add a series of triangular numbers, adds to 10, or 1 plus 3 plus 6 plus 10 would be the next one uh, if I add a fourth layer underneath the other 3, and that's why you would get 20. It's another way of thinking about it. Okay, so part C is a little trickier. It says write a relationship involving n choose r. So much easier when we can just look at the patterns in Pascal's triangle, but um, so the very first one, when n was 1, uh, was down here uh, in row 3. Uh, so it would have been 3 choose 3 was the, the sum, right? It would be 1 orange. Um, but this is row number, let me get a different color here. Uh, I don't know what color do I want. Okay, row, row 0, row 1, row 2 row 3, etc. Uh, 4, 5, 6, dot, dot, dot. So when I was finding the first, the one, the one orange tetrahedron, it was 3, 3, uh, three choose 3. Um, so maybe we can look at this up here as uh, this was 3 choose 3, and this 4, well that would have been I guess 4 choose 3, and this is 5 choose 3, etc. Now is that enough? We're in a relationship, I and mean, we want to see a relationship involving n choose r. So we can think of all the things that add up to that this particular 3 choose 3. Uh, so that was pretty simple actually. It was, um, so when n is 1, when n is is one, just getting my pen handy here. When n is one, 
Why is my pen not writing? No, oh, it's writing now. Okay. Uh, when n is 1, that's supposed to be an n. Uh, Alright, we're going to try this again. When n is 1, uh, we're looking to find 3 choose 3, which happens to be equal to um, row 2, term 2. So 2, 2 choose 2. It seems maybe like a silly thing to write until you start to see the pattern here. When n was 2, we were looking at uh, 4 choose 3. Uh, 4 choose 3 was the number 4. But you could also get that as a sequence of triangular numbers. So that could be uh, 2 choose 2 plus 3 choose 2. So there's sort of a relationship forming here. Uh, when n was 3, we wanted 5 choose 3. Uh, and that would be 2 choose 2 plus uh, 3 choose 2 plus 4 choose 2. Uh, so I guess if we extend this, we'll eventually get to um, number n, which is going to be uh, 2 more than n. So n plus 2 choose 3 is going to be equal to the sum of all the terms starting from 2 choose 2. So it's equal to 2 choose 2. Maybe I'll do this down at the bottom or something. Okay, so if there are n rows to our pyramidal tetrahedron, um, then we're trying to find the number in n, row n plus 2 of Pascal's triangle, term number 3. Uh, you'll notice we're always trying to find term number 3. And that should be the sum of 2 choose 2 plus 3 choose 2 plus all the terms until we get to n plus, n plus 1 choose 2. I think that's a pretty decent relationship. Okay, so moving back to uh, question D. How many oranges are needed for a 10-layer stack in a tetrahedral shape? Well, we're quite fortunate now because we seem to have unlocked the pattern. So if, if there are 10 uh, rows deep, um, that's what it said, right? A 10-layer stack, yeah. So um, if there's 10 rows, or if n equals 10, then we can just say that we want to find uh, 12 choose 3, whatever that is. Okay. And according to my trusty calculator, that's 220. Uh, if we look at that on Pascal's triangle, well, I guess I'd have to draw the triangle quite a bit longer, wouldn't I? I don't feel like doing that. Uh, but, you know, you can imagine adding a bunch of triangular numbers, 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, etc., 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 and eventually you would add up to the sum of 220. Hope it helps.